So, you don't understand face curves. Not a problem. Add to curve for faces lets you put curves around your target of choice. If you don't know what these targets do, look at my tutorial all Z modeler targets in 9 minutes for the crash course. But just for a few quick examples, a single poly just puts curves around whatever face you click, and Polygroup Island will add curves to any group of faces that are the same color. Once you've added curves, you can do all your normal curve tricks like add in chains, ropes, tubes, and tails. And as with all curve actions, if you right click on a curve, you'll get a few extra options that you can do next time you left click on a curve. Which include do nothing, delete all curves, or just delete a single curve. And of course the bevel, which comes with the traditional settings of bevel in one row, two rows, four rows, or eight rows. Linear means each segment is equal distant apart. Sharp edges mean most of the edge loops happen around the edges. Soft edges means most of the edge loops appear in the middle. And if you want a custom edge loop pattern, you can change that here. The higher the value, the sharper, the lower the value, the softer. Edge bevel will be applied dependent on your target. It includes all the standard options like single row, double rows, four rows, and eight rows. And the distance between each segment is determined here. Linear means they're all equal distant apart, sharp moves most of the segments to the edges, and soft moves most of the segments to the middle. And you can have something custom in between over here. The higher the sharper, the lower the softer. Face bridge with target set to two poly lets you left click two faces together. Left click once, left click twice, and bam, you're connected. If target is set to connected poly, depending on what direction the arrow is pointing on the face you're hovering over, when you left click drag, you will bridge those two faces together. Move the mouse left and right to expand the shape, and move up and down to increase the number of segments. The shape of the expansion is determined here and in order they look like Bezier curve, arcs, small round corners, spline, arcs and line, tight round corners, circle, round corners, and straight lines. Interactive curvature means you can left click drag horizontally to expand the shape. Specified curvature will automatically set the height of the expansion to whatever amount you set here. Interactive resolution means you can left click drag vertically to increase the edge loops in the expansion. If you set specified resolution to something like 8, it will automatically insert 8 edge loops into your shape. Align with tangent means it will shape the curve based on the direction of the faces you click. Align to normal means you'll always get the same default shape no matter what direction the face is oriented. Variable width means when two faces are different sizes, each segment will be allowed to have different sizes. Constant width means it will try its best to make sure that each segment is equal despite the two faces being different sizes. If you want the width of the rows created to be symmetrical, set that here. Otherwise, set it there. Polygroup rows will create new polygroup colors for the expansion. Flat will keep everything that happens in the same polygroup color. Tries and quads means ZBrush will decide when to use tries and when to use quads for the sides. If you set this to tries only, the sides will always be triangles. And if you set it to quads only, the sides will always be quads. Face crease lets you quickly put creases where you left click. For example, if you have targets set to polygroup island, meaning a group of faces that are all the same color, all sides literally just means it will crease every edge connected to that group. Generally, long sides tries to pick all the edges that go horizontal and short sides tries to get all the edges that go vertical, but sometimes it gives weird results, so be careful. All faces means every face that is connected to your target. Polygroup border specifies that only the border of the color group gets targeted. And polygroup inner means everything except the border of the color group gets targeted. All transitions just means it won't distinguish between edges based on their angles. Shallow transitions means any edge that is bent at an angle smaller than this number will not be affected. So if we set this to 100 and left click, this edge will be creased because it has a 90 degree angle which is less than 100. But if we set this to 85, because this is a 90 degree angle, it will not be affected. Sharp is the opposite. It means if we set this to 80, it means that all edges with angles less than 80 degrees will not be affected. All targets just means that every edge that is connected to the group will get creased. Outer targets means only the outer edge of the group will get affected. And inner targets means only the edges not on the borders will get creased. And outer and inner have to do with deleted faces. All sides just sets to everything. If you set to outer, only edges bordering a deleted face will be selected. If it's set to inner, only edges that are not bordering a deleted face will be selected. Delete face is really simple. When you left click a face, it's going to delete whatever target you set. If you're on single poly, it'll delete one poly. If you're on front facing, it'll delete the front face. If you're on poly loop, it'll delete that poly loop. If you're on poly group island, it'll delete everything that is the same color. If you're working with edges or points and you don't want to accidentally click a face, just set this to do nothing. 
Face equalize will try and turn any face into a square. Every time you left click drag, it will keep adjusting the polygon until it gets a square. It's pretty useful whenever you just need a square shaped hole in an object, but the starting topology is super weird. Face extrude lets you left click a face to drag out new topology. If you hold control, you'll detach faces from the surface. If you hold shift, you'll remove in between geometry. And if you tap alt, you'll change the color of the new poly groups. One sided poly is a normal extrusion. No sided poly detaches the surrounding poly Polygons. And step brush means it will create new edge loops as you drag out. And if you want a specific size of edge loop extrusion, you can set that right here. Point one is standard, but if you want more space in between, you can scale it to something bigger. Flip faces. This is equivalent to Blender's flip normals. Just pick your target, click to flip the normals. If you're on single face, it only affects one face. If you're on polygroup island, it'll flip everything that's the same color. Face inflate just allows you to left click drag to expand a shape. This function is extremely similar to the inflate brush, but instead it gets applied to whatever target you have. So if we have target set to polygroup island, it's only going to apply inflation to the polygons that are the same color as the face we click. There are three different options. The first one is face normals, which will inflate in the direction the faces are oriented. The next target is edge normal, which extrudes in the direction that the edges are oriented. And the last target is point normal, which extrudes in the direction that the points are oriented. They give you slightly different results. Insert nano measures is a quick way to sprinkle whatever object you want as many times as you want in whatever pattern you want. To obtain a mesh you want to insert, select that subtool, move the camera to a perfect front view, go to Z model or brush, right click a polygon to bring up the menu, and hit to mesh from brush, set target to all polygons, and align mesh to orientation. And when you left click a face on the object, you will see that object appear up here. From here, under Z model, if we go to insert nano mesh and set target to something like single poly, and we left click, it will drag a copy of that object to that face. If you hold shift, it will also drag a copy of that object to every face that is the same color as the face we clicked. And if you want a specific target or pattern, you can hold alt and left click exactly where you want the new objects to appear. Regardless where you want to spawn them, once you've got them on the right side under nano mesh, you'll see a bunch of options. Size controls how big they are. Width is how wide they are. If you want to randomize the width, you can do that here. Length is how tall they are, which again, if you want to randomize, you can do over there. Height is how long an object is, which you can randomize over here. This is a great way to to quickly make cityscapes with buildings and stuff. X offset gives the objects a horizontal offset, which as usual can be randomized. Y offset does the same thing but in the vertical direction, and Z does the same thing in the forward direction. If you had different color poly paint on your object, you could assign those colors to control the X, Y, and Z offsets with this. X rotation moves forward, this randomizes it. Y rotation rotates horizontally and is randomized here. And Z rotates like a barrel roll and is randomized with this. You can flip all the objects horizontally with this or flip them vertically with this. H tiles how many you want in stacks horizontally. If you set it to four, there will be four objects in each face. V does the same thing vertically. If you set it to three, there will be three rows of objects stacked up vertically on each face. There are a bunch of preset patterns you can play with over here. You can randomize the distribution with this. And if you really like the distribution, but you want to re-roll the seed, you can do that right here. Insert points just means when you left click on a face, it'll create a point right in the middle. If you hold alt, you can left click to plan your targets. When you left click then, it'll insert a point to every single white polygon. Insert poly loops is an easy way to expand and add extra loops by left click dragging on your target area. If target is set to single poly and you left click drag horizontally, you'll expand your target. If you drag vertically, you'll increase the number of edge loops. If you tap alt, you will change the color of the poly group. Interactive splits means it will combine triangles and quads. Even splits means it will never allow triangles. And if you want a specific number of edge loops, you can set that here. Loops mode means it will apply the action horizontally. Grid turns the action into a plus and sunburst will include triangles that come from the center. Alternate poly loops means it will alternate poly groups each edge loop. Same poly loop means every new piece of topology will be the same color. And keep poly group is very similar to same poly loop. Face instead allows you to left click to create incisions on a polygon. If you mess with the size and left click, it will try and keep the size the same as when you last adjusted. If you tap alt, you'll be able to change the color of the new poly groups. And if you hold alt before left click, you can click and drag specific positions you want to apply the inset to. And while holding alt, left click again to remove a selection. Center and border gives you a new center and border. Border just gives you a border. And center only gives you the middle. Inset each poly will apply one action to each face individually. But if you have this set to region, it will apply one action 
expansion to the entire region. Equidistant tries tries to keep all the edges the same border and size. Standard is more flexible with the border sizes. And Legacy only works if you have this set to each poly. No size limit means you can shrink and grow them to any size. Default size limit means they can't get any smaller than this. And if you want to manually set the limit to how small they can be, do that over here. Default snap is usually what you need, but if you find yourself getting some weird triangles, try the custom setting and kicking this all the way up. And if you're lucky, it might get rid of them. Face mask allows you to mask an area by left clicking it. Depending on your target is where it will mask. If you want to mask specific areas, just hold alt and left click. If you're on all polygons, it masks everything. If you're on poly group island, it only masks faces that are the same color. And if you're on poly loop, it masks the entire edge loop mesh to brush. This just turns whatever you click into a brush. If you are on aligned orientation, it aligns the mesh based on your camera. If target is set to align to face normal, it aligns the mesh based on the face you click. How you align the mesh determines the default values of your brush. The reason why you want to face the front most of the time is so it will be perfectly flat when you need it to be. If you create a brush when it's not aligned, you're going to have a lot of trouble whenever you need something to be perfectly flat or perfectly straight. Face move allows you to left click on a target and can move it based on the direction the face is oriented. If you hold shift it will slide the target along the surface. But if target is set to align to axis and you hold shift, it will try and slide based on the x, y, and z coordinates. Polygroups allows you to left click on a face and give it a new color. If you left click drag on a face and tap shift you will absorb that color so that the next time you left click you will copy that color to the next target. If you left click drag and tap alt you will cycle through new colors for the polygon and if you hold alt before left clicking you'll be able to plan your targets ahead of time. Override means it will apply the current colors to your target. If we are applying purple it doesn't matter what color the old face was as soon as we click it it's going to be purple. Additive just means the new color of the target will be consistent. Here you can see we have a blue and a purple group. If we override the entire side, there are still only going to be two groups, they just changed colors. Pick existing is the same thing as holding down left click and tap and shift to absorb the color. It just lets you left click the color you want so that when you go back to override, the color will be the same as the one you grabbed. Full coverage means it will only apply the action to the entire target you have set. For example, if we have target set to polygroup island, meaning every face around the one we clicked that is the same color, it will target that entire island. But if we set coverage to random and something like 25 that means only 25% of the island is going to have the color changed. And if you drag left click, you'll be able to cycle through new random arrangements. These determine the pattern of the groups that get applied. One group ID means the action will be the same color through the left click. Some of these make a little more sense than others, like three sides means it will try and color the poly group based on a front and back, left and right, and top and bottom. Six sides means that the front, back, left, right, top, and bottom sides get its own color. And checker just means that it alternates colors like a checkerboard. The other ones are very unique and I don't really understand them but I'll demonstrate them anyway. In order you have one group ID, topological, relative plus one, three sides, poly order, relative minus one, six sides, point order, and checker. QMesh allows you to extrude faces with left click and when two faces get close to each other they will merge together. If you hold shift it will move the face inward and outward, if you hold control it will detach the face, and if you tap alt it will change the color of the new polygroup. And as usual you can hold alt to left click and drag select targets ahead of time. This area here determines how the snapping together occurs. It defaults to a tenth step which means it will take ten small steps until it reaches equal to the face next to it. If you set it to a half it will only take two steps to merge. One. Two. If you set it to a quarter, it'll take four steps instead. One, two, three, four. On full step, it just snaps automatically. Every third takes three steps. One, two, three. And no alignment means that there are no snaps in between. It's just smooth until you get to the end. One-sided poly means new topology has no edge loops. Multi-sided by brush means that when you left click drag, it will create new edge loops. The interval in between each loop depends on the size of your brush. So if you increase the size, then the intervals between each edge loop will be bigger. And if you want a specific size for the interval, between each edge loop, you can set that here. The smaller the number, the more edge loops you will have. Now supposedly attraction determines how strong the snap is, but I haven't been able to notice any significant effects when I change these settings, so as far as I can tell, the default is probably the one you want. Normally when extruding a new face and snapping together, it will always try and keep things as quads, but if you enable triangles, then when you start extruding a new face, it will start you off with a triangle. Disable extended snap means that when you snap two faces together, you will not be able to drag past the face you are snapping to. But if you enable 
enable extensions, that means you can keep dragging past the point the faces are parallel. Scale lets you left click and change the size of your target. This area down here represents where the origin of the scale takes place. Think of origin like the gizmo. If you move it here, the pivot point becomes over there. If you move it over there instead, then that becomes the new pivot point. Mesh center just puts the pivot in the middle of the mesh. Click center puts the pivot on the face you clicked. So if we click this face, it'll collapse over here. And if we click that face, it collapses around there. Axis center puts the pivot around the world center. If we turn this on, you can see the center is right here. And if we move our object around and then try to scale again, it's still gonna try and collapse around this center. Polygon center is one that I don't use much, but I've heard it works really well when your target is set to curved island and you want the origin to be in the middle of the group of polygons that gets affected. Local symmetry means it will set the origin to the center of whatever target you have selected. So if we are on polygroup island, meaning every face that is the same color as the one we clicked, and we click the blue side, the center of the blue group is right here, so that is where it's gonna collapse. If we click on a different color, then it will collapse to the middle of that instead. Set camera perpendicular allows you to left click on a face in order to automatically center the camera perfectly on that face. So when you click on a face, it's gonna try and align itself with that face. If you say do not center, that just means that when you left click on a face, it's gonna make sure that it's oriented in the same direction, but it's not gonna center on it. Slice mesh allows you to left click and slice from one face to another. Every time you click, it's gonna connect the new face to the last face. If you need a specific angle, you can hold down drag, and if you ever need to reset your starting point, Point, just press the space bar. As you can tell, it normally defaults to crease in the slice, but if you don't want to crease, just set it to uncreased here. Sphere Rise lets you turn any mesh into a ball. If you drag click to the left, it will try and make the corners of your mesh into a circle. If you drag click out, it'll try and make the body of your mesh into a circle. But if you hold shift and drag out, it'll do both at the same time. Spin controls are very similar to the scale controls. The origin of the spin is determined over here, and how it spins is controlled over here. No alignment means the rotation is smooth, 15 degrees means it will snap every 15 degrees, and if you want a custom amount of snap like 45 degrees, you can set that right here. Align to axis means the position of the pivot will depend on the world position and not the mesh. Mesh center puts spin origin on the middle of the object. Polygon center puts the spin origin in the middle of whatever face you click. Axis center puts the spin origin in the middle of the world position. Position. Clicked center puts the origin where the mouse was when you left clicked. Local symmetry puts the origin in the middle of your target. So if your target is set to polygroup island, the origin is going to be in the middle of the group of faces that are all the same color as the one you clicked. And clicked polygon corner is like clicked polygon, except it rotates around the corner of the polygon you clicked. Spin edges is a thing that you do with nano mesh. Once you've inserted a nano mesh and you just want to quickly rotate a single target, you can rotate them really quick. Clockwise will rotate them clockwise clockwise and counterclockwise will rotate them counterclockwise. Depending on your target, you can do them all together or you can do it one at a time. Split allows you to left click on a polygon and divide it into more topology. This works on quads, it works on tries. As usual, if you hold alt, you can plan your targets ahead of time. And this option works exceptionally well when used in conjunction with the point split action when you want to extrude a shape from a face. Transpose just allows you to left click a target and move it with the gizmo. If target is set to a single face, you'll control the face. If target is set to polygroup island, you will control that island. And if target is set to all, you will control everything. Uncrease is the literal opposite of crease. All sides means it uncreases all types of crease lines in your target. Long sides means it uncreases all the horizontal creases. And short sides means it increases all the vertical creases. All faces literally targets all faces of the target. Polygroup border only uncreases the edges that are on the border of the polygroup island. And polygroup inner only uncreases edges that are on the inside of the polygroup island. All transitions mean it won't discriminate creases based on their angles. Shallow means it won't uncrease any edge with an angle greater than this value. So this is a 90 degree angle, which is greater than the value we have set, which is 80. So when we click on the blue polygroup, all the creases except these will disappear. Sharp transition is the opposite. Only angles with a value greater than this number will be uncreased. So if this is set to 70, it means the only creases that are bigger than 70 degrees will be uncreased. And since these edges are 90 degrees, if we left click, they will be the only edges that get uncreased. If target is set to something like flat island, meaning all 
faces that are parallel to the one we clicked. All targets means every crease inside the target will be uncreased. Out of targets means that only the creases on the edge of the target get uncreased. And in means every crease except the borders get uncreased. If you have an open hole, all the edges means every crease, regardless of whether it borders the hole or not, get uncreased. If it's set to outer edges, only the creases bordering the hole will get uncreased. If it's set to inner edge, only creases not bordering the hole will get uncreased. Unweld lets you left click a polygroup island and separate it from the rest of the topology. Once you've separated it, you can hold control and shift and left click to see what it looks like by itself. If you change target to single face, you can do this one face at a time. The Z modeler modifier is not a function like the others. It affects how the other tools behave. So for example, when you're on something like QMesh and you have target set to flat island, meaning any face that is facing the same direction as the one you click, the default flatness is 15 degrees, meaning that any face that is bent no more than 15 degrees from the one you click will be included on your action. But if you wanted to change it to something like 30 degrees. That just means that now the next time you click on a flat island, everything that is less than 30 degrees different from the face you clicked will be included. Repeat last tolerance is the required amount of movement to repeat an action on a tablet. And pause repeat is related to the feature where ZBrush remembers the value of your last action. Let's say you're on inset, and this is the perfect border for most of your work. So now when you tap left click, it will keep the borders exactly the same each time. But for whatever reason, you need to change the size. The problem is after you change the size, if you click now, it's using the new size instead of the old size. Well, when you pause repeat, that tells ZBrush, hey, I don't want you to remember the changes I make to the values when I left click, so that when you turn it back on, it continues from the value before you pause. Hope that helps, and as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.